Hey, what's up guys? Today we'll be drawing Ultra Instinct Goku from Dragon Ball Super. In this short video tutorial, I'll be going over the step-by-step -step of how to create this Ultra Instinct Goku drawing from start to finish. If you're just interested in watching the speed drawing video, go ahead and click on the info card now. Alright, so feel free to also check out the video chapters in the description below to preview all the steps or to skip to the chapter that interests you the most. And if you already love what you see here, the completed drawing, feel free to hit like and subscribe. Now, let's take a look at the materials we need for this drawing. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser, a medium point black marker, and a fine point black marker, and some color pencils. So the color pencils are, the colors I have here is a gray for the hair and the brow, the shadow. I have an orange for the pants. And I'm using a brown for the shadow on the pants. I have a peach tan for the skin. And I'm, again, using the red brown for the shadow on the skin. I have kind of like a gold color for the shoestrings. And last but not least, I have blue and a dark blue for all the, the shoes, uh, the wristbands, and the belt. Okay, and the other blue parts in the body. Okay, and the blue, and the dark blue. All right, I'll be doing speed drawings throughout the whole video. So if you're drawing along, feel free to pause the video whenever you like to catch up with me. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get started. Now, before we start our drawing, let's take a look at a reference picture of Ultra Instinct Goku. Okay, so um, the final one shapes and form we get used to create our drawing. So pretty much a uh, human figure, um, let start with a circle, you know, okay, and draw another circle for the torso, another circle for the hip, so we've got two circles for the so shoulder joint, arms coming down, two circles for the elbow joint, arms coming down, two circles for the fist, okay, and then I'm draw two circles where the hips begin, and the hips come down, the knee, Come down to the feet. All right, so very standard pose, but because of the standard pose, now we can really focusing on some nice muscle details or some really cool details on the pants. Okay, so as far as lighting, lighting actually comes from bottom up. Why do I know that? Because look at all these shadows, all these shadows on the top, the top surface of the character, and all these highlights on the bottom surface of the character. That's why we know that lighting is coming from bottom up. Alright, so now that we have enough information to start our drawing, let's begin by roughing in the basic shapes and forms. And we're going to do stick figuring, okay? And after stick figuring, we're going to do uh, form figuring after that. But let's start with stick figuring. Draw very lightly, okay? Okay, so we have the stick figure drawn pretty much, you know, very standard, and I'll, I'll go for the head, uh, drawing the cross. So I've also drawn the cross for the hip and the torso because it kind of helps me, because I don't want it to be like dead on pose, you know, just stand straight. I'm going to be like a little bit of an angle, a little bit. Okay, so uh, that's why I drew the cross, so the whole, the, the whole character is a little bit angled. Uh, see how also I draw a line right here? So the shoulder is also a little bit angled, just make it, the whole thing looks more interesting. Okay, so, you know, uh, circle for the elbow, shoulder joint, circle for the elbow joint, circle for the fists. And, you know, uh, I drew two circles in the hip, indicating how, where the hip is connected to the thighs. Okay, so we got two circles for the knee joint and two circles for the feet. Alright, so let's give it some form. Let's, uh, Goku has lots of muscle. Let's, let's, get, let's thicken it up, give it some form, okay? And let's do something about that crazy hair, okay? Wow, man, this Goku is buff. He's like really thick. Yeah, um, so much muscle. <laughs> if you don't, you know, a little bit more bulkier, he could be a brawly. Like, simply, like, easily be a brawly. Okay, oh, anyways, okay, come on. That's ultra instinct. The guy's gotta be like, oh, okay. Uh, anyways, so now I have the whole form in there, okay? Um, next, it's a uh, clove figure. So, so we got stick figure, form figure, clove figure. So now I'm gonna actually put in some key lines uh, on like the pants. A lot of details in the pants, right? That's what we're gonna, uh, we have to put in a couple key lines at least. So when we start really refining it, it won't be over the place. You won't get lost. It won't be like a maze. You wanna like, start breaking little little details and then you're like, ooh, proportions off. Okay, no, so not gonna happen. Uh, so we're gonna put in some key lines again. The key lines are, the primary lines are gonna make up the shape that with all the key lines in there, like you should, like the drawing should be like 
easy to make it. Well, the rest is filling in the gaps between the key lines, with the fill lines, okay? So we're gonna put in some key lines for the pants, uh, some key lines for the shoes, uh, pretty much, get, you know, the belt. Um, in, uh, I'm gonna start refining things a little bit here and there already, okay? But let's, let's go with the clothes here. Okay, so now we have all the basic shapes and form roughed in. Hey, this is probably the most important stage of the drawing. So do spend enough time on this. Double check your composition, your anatomy, okay? That, that makes sure it is correct, okay? Remember, this, assist, at this stage, we're learning from, like, the real Goku. You're not drawing your own version of Goku. Like, learn how to draw, draw the real Goku accurately before you take on your adventure and create your own Goku, okay? So, double check the anatomy, double check the pose, double check the composition, make sure you like everything. And draw very lightly, as lightly as you can at this stage. It's to avoid committing to any lines too soon. So when I start to refine this drawing in a second, the more definitive lines that I'm willing to come into, I will draw heavier, okay? And the rough sketch will feel like it's faded away as my refined line work emerge from the basic shape and forms, okay? Um, so, if you think it's ready, Let's start refining it. Okay, see how the rough sketch feels like it's faded away now that we have a refined pencil drawing? Okay, so learn to draw with short and repetitive strokes. Draw very lightly, okay? And when you find that definitive line amongst the rough lines, draw heavier as you commit to those lines. That's how you'll see a real line work come out from the rough sketch, okay? So wow, that was a workout. You know, like, Goku's pants, it's, it's really, really complicated. Uh, the way that uh, Akira Toriyama uh, designed uh, his, his cold figure, like, it's very interesting. It's like, you don't see it anywhere else. Like, only Akira Toriyama would draw pants this way. Like, this pants is like a signature pants, you know? Uh, I did uh, give give it a little bit of my, my own input, you know, uh, you know, my own knowledge of color figuring. So I, I did a little details right there and here and there, but mostly it stays true to the structure of Akira Toyama's uh, pants. Uh, the muscle as well, this guy's really a like, master of, uh, of these muscle forms, you know? I'm really just like, impressed. Um, you know, um, like the process is like a workout for my brain almost. Okay, so uh, the next step is to uh, trace the drawing uh, with the marker. Now, remember, you don't have to trace a, a, a one whole line. Uh, with one take, okay? You can always, always break your lines. For example, uh, let me see, if, if, let's say I'm drawing uh, this line right here, okay? So, let's see. see, one, two, three. See how that's actually three strokes instead of one? So do that every way, anywhere you need, okay? Don't force yourself to try to just have to finish the entire line with one take. It's, it's, most likely you're gonna look, miss in there. It's not gonna look good, okay? All right, so uh, let's start tracing.
Okay, so when you erase the pencil drawing, make sure you hold down your paper with your hand, okay? So you don't risk wrinkling or creasing up your paper, okay? So the next step is coloring. The most object you draw will have highlight, mid-tone, and shadows. Now on white paper, we can overlay colors to make it look darker, but we can't really overlay colors to make it lighter. That's why I like to locate and mark off my highlight areas first, and then color everything else with mid-tone. And then I'll come back again and overlay the shadow on top of the mid-tone. It's actually going to have a very nice effect where the shadow and mid-tone overlays, okay? So a lot of times for highlights, I like to leave it white, because it makes the highlights more noticeable, and your form will look more dimensional. If I do color in the highlights areas, it will be probably be the last step, and usually like it's just a light layer of mid-tone colors. Now if you look at uh, Akira Toyama's style, like uh, Akira Toyama is like a master of cell shading, so I'm kind of trying to stay true to that. So uh, cell shading pretty much, uh, it doesn't matter if it's form shadow or cast shadow, he just flattens it out. Okay, but he does it so well that it just is wonderful, it works perfectly. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, mid-tone first, okay? Uh, Usually I like to go with like the lightest or smallest, uh, smallest area of the lightest color. So I'm probably going to work uh, with a blue and then skin tone, hair or not. Okay, so uh, let's get it going. Okay, so now that we have all the mid-tone colors in our drawing, let's take a look at the shadows. Uh, now, there are form shadows and cast shadows, but uh, for this uh, drawing that we're doing, it's got a very special lighting from bottom down up, okay? Uh, so we're just trying to replicate uh, what, oh, what this what artwork uh, the shadow has right now, okay? Um, so I'm going to start grabbing all the darker colors and start adding the shadow in there, okay? So without shadow, it's going to be like the key to making this drawing more dynamic because it has so much contrast. All the, dark, all the shadows are very, very dark in this drawing, okay? So I'm going to start doing that. And I uh, know the drawing is pretty flat right now without the shadows, but watch this when I put in the shadows, okay? Okay, see how after I put in the shadow, like it becomes a lot more dramatic. Like you see, like uh, the form a lot better because with mid-tone highlight and shadow combined, yeah, your shapes will look read as 3D forms instead of 2D flash shapes. Okay, so now uh, because we're drawing with like marker uh, and then we're doing the colors with color pencil, so you're not gonna be able to uh, get into a lot of the super fine tone details on the original art. Yeah, so like um, with color pencil and the marker that we're using, we're not going to be able to get all the super fine details like the original artwork. But the point here is to learn from the original artwork. Like, learn how to create a lighting from the bottom top to the top. Learn the anatomy structure of uh, Akira Toyama, his style, his artwork, and learn how to draw Goku correctly, his proportions. Okay? Uh, so, now, even without all the super fine details, this still looks very awesome. So the uh, last step is, what I'm going to do is, is going to thicken the profile lines. If by thickening the profile lines, the character will pop up more. Uh, the profile lines are the outermost borderline of a character, like the arm, the legs, and the head, the body, and so on. Okay? So after I do that, uh, the, pop, the character will pop out a little bit better. Okay? So, let's do that. Okay, so that completes our Ultra Instinct Goku drawing. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to draw next. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Now remember, drawing is like playing the piano. You can have the best instructor and the best music sheet in front of you. You might even know the music very well. But it is only through practice that you will get better and become what you want to be. The whole point of my video is to provide side-by-side -side training for you on a daily basis. Like riding a bicycle. I might have to hold your bike in the beginning, but just keep drawing and keep practicing. And before you know it, you'll be a master yourself. I'll see you next time.